Genesis 11, 4. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. In Genesis 10 and 11, we see the rise of Nimrod. Nimrod was a demonic individual. Nimrod was a man who was being led by fallen angels, in my opinion, to rebel against God. Now, he didn't just come with that type of a message, though. He came with a unified type of a message of let us rebel against the establishment. Let us rebel against the powers that be. So God had ordered them to be scattered upon the face of the earth, to spread, to, to multiply. And Nimrod went against that completely and he set up for himself an establishment, a government, a united front, a new world order, if you will, in that time. Eventually, God had none of that. And if you look at verses 5, 6, and 7 in Genesis 11, you'll see, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand another's speech. God had to intervene in Nimrod's plans. And the spirit operating under Nimrod is the same spirit operating under a large majority of any dictator of any world leader that you have seen on earth. And what you saw in Nimrod was a foreshadow of things to come. There is nothing new under the sun. This is why you see every world leader call for a new world order. Now there are different varieties of a new world order. Some have more of a nationalistic view of a new world order where we will have a new world order but China will run the new world order or Russia will run the new world order or the United States will run a new world order. That's more of a nationalistic conservative Republican type of new world order but there's also the liberal type of new world order where all nations come together as one, they all rule together in peace and in love. But make no mistake about it, whether it's a nationalistic new world order or a globalistic new world order, it's still a new world order. And that's where I think people fail to see this because we have arguments among disciples of Christ and we have arguments upon people in America, for example. Someone that will tell you those are liberals and some that will tell you these are all the far right. If you're a disciple of Christ, you need to understand that the whole Republican-Democrat deception, it's exactly that a deception. When Obama was in office, how many proclaimed that he was taking all the liberals as fools? All the minority communities, he was fooling them, telling you that he was going to fight for their rights, but the only rights that he fought for in the White House was for the sodomy agenda, right? And the same thing is happening now with Donald Trump. There is a huge idolatry among Christians and among people that are quote-unquote truthers that they, they idolize this man to the point that they will defend him to the T not realizing that just because he's more of a nationalistic type of a person it's still a new world order he was with Kissinger this past week and Kissinger sitting right next to Trump called for a new world order you may want to say something and thank you for being here Anna. thank you very much Mr. President I didn't expect this opportunity. Uh, it's always a great honor to be in this office. And I'm here at a moment when the opportunity to build a constructive, peaceful world order is very great. And the president is leaving on a trip through Asia which I think will make a great contribution to uh, uh, progress and peace and prosperity. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much. Mr. President, sir, thank you all. Thank you. you see, the powers that be, led by Satan and his fallen angels and principalities, the powers that be have their hands on both sides of the cookie jar has their hands in the Republican end, has their hand on the Democrat end, okay? And they control both opposition movements in hopes that you can get caught up in both opposition movements. It's no different than the NBA. You have the Eastern Conference, the Western Conference, but they're all under the same umbrella of the NBA. You can root for LeBron James, 
and you can think that LeBron James does no wrong to you. You can root for Steph Curry and think that Steph Curry does no wrong to you. At the end of the day, just because they're playing against each other, that doesn't mean that they don't represent the same league. The same thing with politics. Some have more of a nationalistic view of the New World Order. Others have more of a globalistic view of the New World Order. But at the end of the day, these folks want a New World Order. Matthew 12, 26. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? You really think that they put Donald Trump in there to take down the New World Order? You're crazy. Especially with Kissinger calling for one next to him and him saying nothing. Have you not seen Kissinger with Obama, with the Clintons, with the Bushes? He's been there all along. Donald Trump is just another puppet. That's all he is. That's all he is. And I'm just warning you not to let yourself be used by the puppeteers that be. In Matthew 14, 22 to 33, we see an example of Peter. Peter started to follow Christ and started to walk upon the water. In verse 28, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But then he saw the wind boisterous. He was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. As disciples of Christ in the end times, our eyes should be placed upon Jesus Christ. I know it's not easy sometimes because there are many winds and many destructions and many deceptions and many lies out there that take our eyesight off of Christ. And this video is for a disciple of Christ. If you're a person who simply claims to be a true there, a Gnostic, all of that stuff, all of that demonic stuff, then that's, that's on you. I'm talking to disciples of Christ here who get carried away with this whole NFL protest, that protest, this protest, Trump is doing the right thing, Trump is doing the wrong thing. Listen, man, if the mark of the beast was instituted today, do you think Trump would defend you? To these people, to these individuals, their agenda is no different than Nimrod's. The same spirit, different character. The same spirit operated under Napoleon, Obama, the Bushes, Nebuchadnezzar, you name the leader, they all had the same traits and they all have the same agenda. To develop a world government that doesn't stand by the kingdom of God, that doesn't represent the kingdom of God, that actually goes against the values of the kingdom of God. If you're a disciple of Christ, you need to come out of that because that harlot Babylonian spirit that is flowing through all world governments is going to persecute you when it's all said and done. This is why you should keep your eyesight on Jesus and preach the gospel the more you possibly can. The more you possibly can. We have a limited time space to do so. A limited time space. Don't waste another ounce defending any politician. Pray for them, absolutely. Don't defend their demonic ways and actions because their government, their world agenda that they represent is not the world agenda that you represent, which is the kingdom of God. May God bless you and your family. Hope you understand where I'm coming from today. Thank you for your prayers. We appreciate it. God bless.